Hello, good people. I am the last air blender, and welcome to a another tutorial-ish thing. I'm not sure what to call these because they aren't really tutorials. Because all I'm really doing is showing you my method to accomplishing the task at hand. And today, the task at hand is creating small pixel art textures in uh, your photo editing program. I use GIMP because it's free. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to uh, show you guys step by step how I uh, normally accomplish the task of making pixel art textures. Normally I choose a file size, a uh, image size that's around 16 by 16 or 32 by 32. Today I'll do 16 by 16 because it's generally easier to work with. Right? And at first I generally like to use a base color of white because it's just easier to see what's going on. I uh, normally use the pencil hard edge tool because it uh, defaults to only doing uh, only drawing in a pixel format while whereas the um, the paintbrush likes to uh, blend the colors so yeah um, the first thing I normally think about when I go about making a uh, pixel art texture is what kind of texture I want to make. And for this uh, tutorial-ish thing, I'll uh, start with a brick wall texture because they tend to be very simple. So I just start by blocking in the lines I plan on using. And I decided I wanted large bricks, so I put my lines very uh, spaced out from one another. And since I'm doing bricks, I need to also create lines going down. Now this is a seamless texture, and what that means is when you tile the texture over and over again, it shouldn't make any odd looking lines. It should all flow together into one pattern, and I'll show you what that means. If in GIMP I go to uh, Map Tile, I wanted to make a texture that has a bit of variation in it, so I made the bricks uh, different sizes, but you can just as easily make bricks that are the same size if you wanted to, like so. Or this isn't exactly the same size, but you know what I mean. So no, now after you've uh, developed your basic line pattern that flows seamlessly together, you can now get started in blocking in the colors as well. So for this basic brick texture, I want to use, I'll just use a base of a light red. And I just filled my white areas with the red, like so. And my dark shadow color, that's the second color you have to choose, will be a darker red. Pretty simple. And you just replace your black lines with the shadow color. Now the next step 
in creating your basic pixel art texture is shading each individual piece of the pattern and I'll show you how to do that first you have to figure out how rounded you want your bricks in this case or pe or rocks or whatever you're doing or pieces of the pattern you want to make I'm going to do mine a little more rounded so you just go over your brick or your piece of the pattern again with that same color you're using for your shadows. All I'm doing is reinforcing this, these lines I've made. Making them two pixels wide instead of one. And what that basically does is it reinforces the fact that this is not a flat texture. It is beveled out toward the camera. And now if I tile it again to make sure it looks right, you'll see it looks a bit more 3D than it did. Now to make you even more, look even more 3D, you can darken the initial shadow uh, lines that you made using a even darker color. So basically, it's just about layering your uh, values to. Uh, create something that looks 3D, layering your colors. And yeah, I'm doing this uh, tutorial thing because I've come across a lot of people who have trouble with uh, this kind of thing. And yeah, just keep taking lighter and lighter colors. layering them so yeah the next step is to create uh, what are called highlights and this is to make your uh, make your uh, texture really pop out really uh, look like a finished 3d uh, product and how that's done is taking a color that's lighter than all of the other colors by far and how light your uh, your highlight color is determines how shiny your uh, texture will be so if this was going to be like a plastic or a glass material I would make my highlight color very bright so from uh, far away it looks shinier but this is brick so it would be more stone like so I'm going to make my highlight color only a small bit brighter than the rest of the colors in the texture And I'm just positioning these uh, highlight colors at places where opposite to the shadow color that we made using our uh, using our lines. They're opposite to the shadow color because the light that's supposedly hitting the texture would be opposite of the shadow. And there are all kinds of styles and methods to doing pixel art textures like this. I'm just showing you uh, kind of my style or one of the styles available to you.
or you could even uh, develop your own style. And now that we've applied the highlights, we can look back at our piece in a tiled view because you always want to do that. You always want to keep going back into a tiled view to make sure your piece looks right from far away. And I've noticed looking at my uh, texture from far away that the bricks are uh, an odd shape because I put the shadows in uh, only one side of the brick and so that makes it look like it has a very sharp edge. So to fix that, I'm simply going to take my uh, shadow from uh, the shadowy side and sort of lay it on the other side to bevel it a bit. And yes, doing that should make it look more rounded for us. And yeah, you just need to play around with what looks right to you, what looks right for your uh, particular style. See, I'm just gonna keep playing around with things to make my style look right. And that's okay. And once you have a, uh, a product that you're happy with, what I normally do is I uh, go into uh, the color panel. It might be different in Photoshop, but in GIMP, it's the color drop-down menu here. And I hit Posterize, and I find a number that changes the colors and the values to something I like. And what Posterize normally does is it decreases simply the number of colors in your texture to the value specified, but in this case it will simply change the colors for us. And I just found one that looks natural to me. And I can also fine tweak it a bit. See what looks the best. It's all about what looks the best to you and what looks the most natural to the style you want to create. And I'm just going back into the tiled view to get a good look at my product here. Right, and now since I have the initial form here, I can add a little bit of noise to the texture in order to give it a more stone-like feel and to do that I'm just going to dot the shadowy side of the texture with our mid-tone color. That will hopefully create a feel for us that is somewhat somewhat noisy and rough like stone and don't be afraid to also do this with your highlights too this is all um, depending on how rough you want your texture and now after we've done that I've noticed my texture here looks a bit flat and boring 
So I'm just going to go back in and add a bit of color uh, contrast variation. And how I normally do that is take the select tool, select the entire bricks that you want to change. And in, in Photoshop, it's probably different, but in GIMP, I hold shift to select multiple areas at a time. And I just change the curves, saturation, Just all the things that will variate the color and contrast. Alternatively, you can also go back into Posterize and find a different value and it will vary the colors and contrast for you, but sometimes it's hard to find a setting you like. So, I normally just vary my colors in the uh, curves window. So now I have bricks that are darker red and more desaturated bricks that are much lighter red. And if I go back into my tile view here, we have a bit of color variation makes it look a bit more interesting I can and you can do this as many times as you want very vary, variate the uh, colors to just make them pop and make your entire finished piece look more three-dimensional and uh, believable looking. And the key working with uh, making any type of textures really is fine tuning things until you're happy with them and they look natural and believable to you. And yeah, I'm just about happy with this product. And so yeah, the tile we've created is completely seamless, so you can tile it as many times as you want. If you're making a game where you uh, need to create a map f full of tiles, you can easily use this texture to create walls and such or you can uh, create your uh, own uh, design. I might uh, do another tutorial for you guys about different uh, shapes using this uh, same technique and yeah hope you uh, got something out of this little demonstration slash tutorial thing and see you